What's going on, people? Welcome to United View. Welcome to another Flex's View. And it's not really what I want to do. It's not. It's not. More mess uh, regarding this Marcus Rashford situation. I had to give you my take on it. Listen, I know it happened last night. And I think it's important that when these things come out, right, we have to let them, we have to let them cook a little bit. We have to wait for some more facts to come out. We have to wait to see who responds, i.e. Man United, i.e. Marcus Rashford i.e. other journalists, etc., etc. Of course, us as fans are just going to go straight in and go on a mad thing um, and start cussing. But at the end of the day, there needs to be more information. I think, I think now what we can see since the news has come out and the Athletic have done a big piece as well is that something's up. Something's up. Something's not marrying up. And I, and I said it on X. I tweeted, I said, look, if this is true with what Marcus Rashford has done, then Eric Ten Hag just needs to keep the same energy. The same energy. This is, I'm not just going to make this a video of just coming on here and saying Rashford's a this, this, he's a disgrace, he's that, he's this, that and the other. I'm going to give my opinion on what I think about the situation if he has done what's, what is what has been reported. But my thing is the way, the biggest thing actually from this is how Eric Ten Hag deals with this because we've seen players get reprimanded before. We've seen, obviously, what will happen with Jaden Sancho, which, don't get me wrong, slightly different in terms of straight up calling the manager a liar and this, that, and the other social media post. There was definitely no way back unless he said sorry. However, this is a different type of unprofessionalism to deal with, and Eric Ten Hag needs to deal with it as efficiently um, as, he, as he has other things. There can't be any, you know, Mr. Nice Guy treatment, or there can't be any rules bent just because it's Rashford and he's from the academy and he's one of our own and all of these things. It needs to be whoever the player is, whether it's Rashford, whether it's Sancho, whether it's Bruno, whether it's Maguire, whether it's Varane, whoever it may be. If you break the rules or you are unprofessional or you are not doing what you're supposed to be doing, then there's consequences. It's as simple as that. So let's just get into the story about what the facts are or what, what is the reported facts. What we do know is that Eric Ten Hag said that Marcus Rashford is ill, right? And that he didn't train uh, yesterday. Uh, he didn't, yeah, he didn't train on Friday. Um, so we're like, okay, him and Johnny Evans. He said him and Johnny Evans are ill. So you're thinking, all right, cool. There's, there's, listen, there's been so much illness this year already. And obviously the back end of last year, players were dropping like flies. Always seems to happen. It's annoying, but cool. Playing Newport, he's injured. He might be in the game. He might not be. But then when you see that he's gone out, for a night out on Thursday night, or he's reported, the, the, the time he's reported in ill for training, right, was on Thursday night, and he's got training on Friday morning. You go, hmm, okay. But you see he was out in Northern Ireland, in a club. Nah, it doesn't marry up. And then the, the Athletic have gone one further and said that actually he went out on Wednesday night as well. So he was out two nights in a row. Now, I'm not that guy. And this is what I'm saying. I'm not the guy of footballers can't live their lives. They need to stay in their yard. Don't come out. They can't enjoy themselves. They can't live their lives. I've never been that type of person. And I never will be because at the end of the day, they are just human beings. But when you play for Man United, actually, no, forget that. When you, Not just when you play for Man United. When you're a professional footballer at the highest level, even, even any professional footballer, but especially now, one, you've got to read the room. Two, you've got to understand that you have responsibilities that shouldn't be broken. And three, if you break them rules, you have to expect consequences and, and, and scrutiny to the highest level. You're Marcus Rashford. You play for Man United. You're one of the most high-profile players in this country, in the world. You're one of the most high-profile high players in the world. So you going out to some little bars and clubs and that in, in Northern Ireland, it's going to make the news. It's going to make the news. So... If you do go out, make sure that you're not, you know, you're allowed to be out and it's not going against, you know, the, the club protocol so that no one can say anything to you. But this clearly doesn't look like that because it looks like he's been out for two nights in a row. And now the club said that he was out for one night and then the Athletic have seen that he's been out for two nights. So, and, and obviously Man United have declined to comment and so has, um, and so has Marcus Rashford's camp. And I just want to see Eric Ten Hag if this is if this alleged sort of reporting is is correct, which I mean, the Athletic are pretty spot on with a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, 
And we can see, like, from the videos that we saw, listen, I know it's not a court of law and online and stuff like that, but it looked like Rashford to me. It did. Yeah, we know it's him. Let's not dress it up. It was him. But he needs to be comfortable that he was allowed out in them two days. But the reason why the pushback is there is, come on, the day, be hours before training, and I'm not saying he was legless, by the way. I ain't saying that he was so drunk and, you know, you couldn't, he was falling over and he, you know, how, I don't know. We don't know if he was drinking or not. I ain't going down that route of stuff that I don't know about. But what I do know is that he's been out uh, for a couple of nights because he was wearing different clothes as well. So I thought that was a bit weird. And then he's, what we do know is that he's reported as ill on the Friday night. Um, it says here in the athletic, it says that Rashford attended Thompson's Garage nightclub in the city on Thursday night, returning to Manchester on a private flight following the morning. Eric Ten Hag said um, that he wouldn't be able to play. He was he was unable to train ahead of the FA Cup fourth round against Newport due to illness. Um, then video footage of Rashford subsequently emerged um, with United claiming that the images were from Wednesday night before a scheduled day off. So United basically tried. That's the way this is this is not adding up. United have basically said that nah it, that, that that those images are from Wednesday. So like he was he was technically allowed out then. It's not the day before training. Wednesday night before a scheduled day off for the first team. So what he's saying is that the first team were supposed to be off on the Thursday. But then it says that Rashford was also pictured out in another uh, night spot on Wednesday. So it's like, what? And however, multiple sources have confirmed to the athletic that Rashford spent both nights out um, celebrating in the Northern Irish capital, attending um, Thompson's on Thursday. So um, that's... That's where it's like, well, you spent two days out, going out. Don't know how drunk you got. Don't know if you drank at all. You might have been drinking waters all day. But it doesn't look good if you're out late. And then the day before training, you're getting trying to get flight back. And then you report as as ill. Is this like an Abamyang thing where you've pushed it too tight? I remember when he was trying to come back from somewhere on a plane and he got back late. Now, don't get me wrong. It's still your problem. Still your issue. You still broke the rules. But what I'm saying is, is I don't want to go down there. He was legless and drunk and just out till five in the morning partying. It it seems that way, but I don't know that. What I know is that he reported himself ill for training, but man was out twice. So how ill could you have been? That's where, that's where the sort of eyebrows start raising. The reason why he was there, because there was some positives to why he went to Northern Ireland in the first place. Rashawn Williams, who he spent time in the academy with, um, uh, has, had signed for the Northern Irish champions. Um, Lan, or is it Lane? I think it's Lan I'm going to go with. I'm sorry if I've mispronounced that to any of the Northern Irish fans here or fans of the team. Um, but he basically went to, to go and you saw the pictures of him meeting that team and went to their training facilities where he, sh you know, the pictures of, of him there was, was, was what was shared. No problem. But clearly in the downtime, he's gone out in a couple of nights and that's just not what's happening. If we just think back to like what Athletic said, uh, Rashford was, uh, you know, when we when we lost 3-0 against City and he went out, Eric Ten Hag said it was unacceptable. He said it was unacceptable. So what's this then? Because if this is, if that was unacceptable, like where he played and then went out and didn't read the room, called that unacceptable, and that was in a derby, by the way, what is going out two nights in a row and then reporting yourself ill for training on the Friday, but then pictures coming out of you in the club's because again, even if you was allowed to be there, whatever, read the room, read the room. And, and Ten Hag just needs to deal with this in the exact same way he's dealt with other stuff before. Can't just give Marcus Rashford a, a, a bligh because he's Marcus Rashford. Like it, it just shouldn't work like that. And obviously we're expecting Marcus Rashford to know better and get a hold of sort of, you know, his professionalism if if he's if he wasn't supposed to be there and if these reports are true. Um so I don't know, man. I, I just think it's more more mess and it's more situations that keep happening at these clubs where the standards are just on the floor. Like, why is it? Why? I don't see other clubs having this level of discontent or this level of unprofessionalism of players who just seem like they don't care. Because that's what it feels like. That's what it feels like. It just feels like, what? what's the point? What's the point? Like, and then there was the Wolves game. Remember when he was he was late for the meeting? And don't get me wrong, we all praise Ten Hag with how he dealt with that. Some people even said it should have been a stronger punishment. It shouldn't even have been in the match day squad. If we wasn't relying on him so heavily and we were doing a bit better at the time, maybe he wouldn't. I don't know. But he was he was not in the match day. Uh, he wasn't starting. He was on the bench, came on at halftime, scored the winner. 
all, all water off a duck's back, swept under the carpet. They had a hug at, half, uh, at the end of the game and he said, yeah, it was my fault, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then now you're getting this however many months later. So it's not, it's not good, man. And it's not like Rashi's like some little kid who's just coming through and just, you know what I mean? I'm not seeing Ganacho out doing this. I'm not seeing Kobe Mainu out doing this. I didn't see, we didn't see flipping Palestri and Ahmad and, and Hannibal, you know, the, the real young kids out doing this. He's supposed to be setting the example. Do you know what I mean? And listen, being high profile is one thing and I get that there's no privacy in that. And like I said, I, I am always one who's who looks at the side of the players of like, you know, the invasion of their privacy. They can't go anywhere. You know, just because they're rich or they, they've got millions and millions of pounds, it doesn't mean that their life's perfect and all of that stuff, 100%. That's why I'm not on here going, I've seen some people just literally going in on him. And look, everyone's got the right to their opinion, but I, I'm not, that's not really my, that's not really my style. But you have to call a spade a spade. That doesn't look good. And he's got a lot to answer for. And that's what I'm saying. Once he answers to Ten Hag and Ten Hag's seen that he's done something wrong, I want to see the same treatment. I want to see the same consistency. You know, maybe Ten Hag won't play it out in public, but it's not going to be hard to see if Marcus Rashford's missing from a couple of match day squads or something until he, he sorts himself out. It would be very interesting to see what Eric Ten Hag says because let's be let's be real in the game later on today he's going to get asked about it especially especially if Rashford's not in the squad because he said Ten Hag said Rashford was ill and Johnny Evans so we will have to see how they recover we'll have to see how they recover so he's not saying they're so ill that they're definitely not he's like maybe they might they might be in the squad if he's in the squad after that Ten Hag better have a flipping good reason because that doesn't look good he looked like he shouldn't have been out but we'll wait and see we'll wait and see I'm going to pass my sort of final verdict and judgment on this when I hear what Ten Hag has to say and we see how this plays out. Because right now, we've heard from the media. We heard initially from Man United sort of claim that that was from the Wednesday night, but then we've subsequently seen that that was for two days out. Um, and then we've seen, obviously, the Athletic make such a strong uh, piece claiming that they've, they, can, can, they can confirm that he was out. And we haven't heard from Rashford as well because the, his camp declined to comment, as did Man United. So... They're going to have to say something when Eric's asked about it at the game today because when the starting lineup comes out and they ask him, they're going to say, where was Marcus, where's Marcus Rashford? Why is he not in the squad? Does he do a Sancho? Does he say, based on some internal situations, which I have spoke to him, it, was, it will remain private, but he's not going to be in the squad today. Does he do that? Does he just say he was ill and stick to the thing and say, yep, so he couldn't make it and say it's not disciplinary? What does Eric Ten Hag do? I want to see it because if he just gives him a bligh and then the next game's against, ironically, against Wolves. Um, oh no, sorry, uh, West, no. Wolves, midweek, ironically. Is he going to miss that game? But the whole game for, for for you know, doing what he's not supposed to do. So let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. All eyes on Ten Hag, but Ten Hag needs to be consistent on this one and he needs to keep the same energy that he's kept for players when he wants to sort of be authoritarian. I'm not here for this half-half energy. He needs to be consistent. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below, guys, and I'll see you in the match later on. Hopefully we just do what we need to do and be professional and beat Newport.